Welcome back my fellow duplicates. Today we're going to take a look at several mods that'll help you put a little extra juice into your base. So plug in your wheel and get running because today we're taking a look at power mods. The first mod we're taking a look at here is Squirrel Wheel from Sanchez. This right here allows a little pip to run on a wheel. Now the thing about this mod is that it does require a happy pip. So you have to make sure that you are grooming your pips, keeping their teeth well brushed and their fur nice and clean. So as long as they're happy and well fed, they should run on over here and try to enjoy their squirrel wheel. Look at them, look at how happy they are. So every time a pip is running on a wheel, they actually gain some stat. That is a plus one to happiness and critter metabolism. So there's an additional benefit to making them work out. Not only that, while they're running on the wheel, they will be generating 400 watts. Ooh, so that's nice. And if you combine that with wood, which you can either burn for power or potentially convert into ethanol, you could have a really interesting way to power your base. Hmm, pretty cool. The next mod we're going to take a look at is Advanced Generators. This is actually a mod that's been updated a few times. Uh, so there's actually, I think, about three versions on the workshop. But this is the most current one with English text. So this mod includes four new generators. We have the Refined Carbon Generator. Naphtha Generator, Eco-Friendly Generator, and the Thermal Electric Generator. Mmm. Now, for the Thermal Electric Generator, you've probably seen me use this a whole lot. Matter of fact, I'm using it right over here to cool down all the liquid that's coming out of my metal refinery here. So this is actually running through a loop back here, and then is using another mod to actually connect to the machine. So how this thing works is that it always tries to cool down to 10 degrees Celsius. So it does this by consuming 128,000 DTUs per second, uh, and then producing 250 watts while it is trying to cool down. All right, so just like this, I was able to get the thermoelectric generators heated up, and now they're producing power while they're trying to cool back down. So as long as they're above their minimum temperature right there, they're going to be running at 250 watts. It's not any more complicated than that. So the refined carbon generator is quite simply just an upgraded version of the original machine. So this machine right here will output 1,200 watts and 20 grams a second of carbon dioxide. One of the weirdest generators in the game is the Natha generator. So that's this one right here. All right, so it looks like it consumes Natha at one kilogram per second. But on top of that, it also consumes a little bit of oxygen. All of this to produce 850 watts. Interesting machine. All right, so next up is the eco-friendly gas generator. As we can see here, this thing consumes natural gas, a little bit of oxygen, and a slight amount of filtration medium, which is sand. And then its output is nice, clean water. As we can see here, the amount of contents that's moving out of this is 30 grams per second of carbon dioxide. And then if I measure this here, it's 100 grams per second of natural gas. And I believe it's about 28 grams per second of water. So that does it for the advanced generators. It kind of alters a couple of existing generators right there. And definitely unlocks some new opportunities with this guy. However, maybe you're looking for a generator that might just brighten up your day a little bit. May I recommend this Shinebug Reactor by A Squared. This glorious machine right here contains the pure innocent essence of many, many shine bugs and extracts their luminosity for power. Now this machine right here was based on a machine that you can make in the vanilla game uh, by containing many, many different shine bugs within one single area and then putting them next to a bunch of solar panels. I've done a couple of videos on that. You can check it out in the top right here. And I've actually done it in several of my playthroughs. However, the biggest thing about the shine bug reactor uh, or shall I say the biggest negative side to it, is the fact that it does have a performance impact on your game. Especially when you start to get many of them up and running, and it contains like 300 shine bugs. So to get around the performance impact of that in your game, A Squared made this machine right here. So how this works is you go ahead and ship in shine bug eggs like this, or sun bugs or any of those. And it's actually contained inside the system here. So you can see that there's a bunch of shine nymph eggs inside of there. And then as those hatch, they will actually live inside of the reactor right here, floating around forever and ever. I assure you, they're very, very happy. And then the light that they give off is absorbed by these panels right here. And you can see the amount of power that this thing is kicking out. It can go up to 1,250 watts if you can feed it enough eggs, which will take a little bit of time and a lot of ranching. 
but it scales up with however many shine bugs you put inside there. So you deliver it by eggs, and then the eggs remain inside of the machine and just continue to stay inside there. And just like in the vanilla setup here, a shine bug will actually give off an egg before it dies. So that's how you can maintain a population inside of here without actually feeding it. It's the exact same thing we do in the vanilla setup. But as those eggs break, they actually drop right down here so you can actually go and pick up the shells to eventually make a little bit of steel. So personally, this is my favorite modded generator in the game. I've actually hooked it up to a new little automation signal here by using the wattage sensor output. So once we go above a certain number right there, I'll kind of stop making more and more shine bugs. Interesting. So there you have it, the shine bug reactor. But maybe slightly altering vanilla isn't really your flavor. You really want something a bit more. Wow. Let me tell you about Carbon Revolution by Skyrunner. Not only does this mod contain several new generators, it actually changes the fundamental amount of carbon dioxide that's produced inside of your base and therefore the uses that you can use for it. So there's so there are tweaks to existing generators such as the coal generator, natural gas generator, fertilizer, and uh, slicksters as well. But on top of that, there's some new content as well, such as a couple of plants right here, CO2 crystallizer, and the big old new generator right here, which is the CFB generator. The CFB generator is a real beast of a machine. Ooh, look at that. So a lot like the other refined carbon generator, this one too burns refined carbon. And it burns it at the rate of one kilogram per second. It's producing two kilowatts of power and outputting 250 grams of carbon dioxide per second right there. So in line with all of the other carbon revolution stuff here, it's actually outputting quite a bit more carbon dioxide than what you would normally see with a generator. But one of the biggest things here is the amount of heat that it's putting off, 80,000 DTUs per second. So it's kind of a hot little generator. Hmm. I played with this mod in my super modded playthrough and I have to admit that having more carbon dioxide inside of your base does make it a little bit more challenging, but at the same time, there's a fair bit more uses for it. It's a fun mod to really kind of alter the way the game is played. I think this is a great mod if you're looking to start up a new map and you want to play things a little bit different than you've done in the past. So at this point, you might find yourself with many generators sprawling throughout your base. And the one thing that can get kind of annoying here is the fact that our power plants are relatively small. Well, not anymore. The Popa power plant increases the maximum size of your power plant from 96 to 240 tiles. Made by Pope Snowball. So at this point, you're probably generating a whole lot of power. But how do you distribute it? Hmm. Well, every good distribution system starts with the right transformers. So let me introduce you to a couple of new transformers. If you have some small needs here, this micro transformer will do the job just fine for you. Up to 750 watts. So enough for a light wire. If you're feeling a bit more mid-sized, then the medium power transformer is just right. That right there will limit you at two kilowatts. So it's perfect for those conductive wires. But then again, maybe you have some even bigger needs. So what about a 100 kilowatt power transformer? Mmm. The crazy thing about this 100 kilowatt power transformer is that it also works a bit like a battery storing 100 kilojoules of juice. Technically speaking, there is a two megawatt power transformer, but it doesn't seem to be working just yet. So we're gonna, going to ignore that one. But then again, maybe you're not after big power, but after more flexibility. What about an underwater transformer? Yes, that right there is a waterproof transformer. Pretty handy. Not only that, since it combines a couple of materials right there, which is a refined material and something like diamond or glass, it alters the overheat temperature. So this is some of the highest temperature transformers you can build. Matter of fact, if you make it out of thermium and diamond, it gives it an overheat temperature of 1,175 degrees Celsius. Ooh, hot stuff. So not only is it useful for being underwater, it also works in a steam environment too. You can find the micro transformer under the same name by A squared, medium transformer by Clemming Wong and water proof transformer and battery by Skyrunner. So yes, there are batteries as well because once you distribute your power, you need to store it. Because not only do you need power distribution, you also need power storage. So yes, we do have waterproof batteries. Again, same sort of temperature deal right there, but we also have some other batteries available as well. Maybe you just need to store a little bit of power, you know, for a sensor or something like that. Well, the tiny battery has you covered. 
This little guy here will store five kilojoules of juice. It comes in both the normal version and the smart version. So as you can imagine, that also has an automation signal with it too. So now that could be real handy. So if those little guys sound good to you, then look up Tiny Battery by MindMent. However, if you're looking for something a little bit bigger, may I recommend the huge battery? Mm, that bad boy will store 80 kilojoules of juice. Maybe you're looking for something a little bit better. How about the huge smart battery? Oh! <laughs> Look at that monster. I use those inside of my base as my main storage for my power system. Very nice. However, maybe you're looking for something a little bit different, something more long term. Well, may I introduce you to the main battery backup? This is the emergency battery. This bad boy here only stores 25 kilojoules. However, it does something quite interesting. It doesn't actually lose charge over time. And it can also send out an automation signal. So while that may sound overpowered, let me go ahead and show you what it takes to make one of these 700 refined materials, like that, insulation and ceramic. So it's an incredibly expensive battery, but it is the most e uh, efficient option we have available. So if you need something that you can rely on to keep your system up and running when everything else goes down, this is the thing that you can turn to. So long as you build enough of them to store up a lot of power. So by now we have massive amounts of power that we're trying to store and distribute. The problem is our wires. They're just not up to the task. Well, may I introduce you to the Gigawatt Wire Mod by Egladil. This one right here includes some incredibly high powered wires and that's also where you can get the 100 kilowatt power transformer. So no longer are we limited to just two kilowatts for our average wire that runs through our base. We can build these bad boys out of a five kilowatt wire, just like so. And then there's a couple of new heavy watt wires over here. So the five kilowatt wire that runs inside of your base here requires things like copper, aluminum, gold to refine metals, plus a little bit of plastic or visco gel. So not too bad. The megawatt wire, which is the equivalent of that, is simply a more expensive version of the same thing. And it's capable of a thousand kilowatts. So, and this comes with its own megawatt joint plate and they also have the insulated bridge as well. Maybe that isn't big enough for you. Say hello to the gigawatt wire. Mm. And it too has its own gigawatt joint plate right here. So while this wire can move an insane amount of material, it's also quite challenging to use because its overheat temperature is minus 70 degrees Celsius. So this wire is made of like superconductor material. And if it gets too hot, it starts to break down. So very handy, but also quite challenging to use. But then again, if you're pushing a wire that is a gigawatt, then using a little extra power to keep it cool probably isn't really the biggest thing to ask for. But seriously, you probably got an amazing base and I want to see some pictures. Finally, just a couple more mods here. Longer conductive bridges are super handy. You can find that under the name Longer Bridges by Chromium Boy. Another handy one is Insulated Joint Plate by Davkus for your high temperature needs. So there you have it, many mods to power up your base, store it and distribute it successfully. And while I've covered many of them that are on the workshop, there's actually far more and they're always adding more and more to the game as well. I mean, we just motorized a pit. What's next? Puffs? They fart on a little windmill? That would be amazing. Not only that, there's other mods here like adjustable transformers, or if you want to name them because you have a very large grid and you want to know what's running where. I don't know, something like that. You can find the links to these mods in the description below. At any rate, that's all I got time for today. If this looks like the channel for you, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. And as always, stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar, out.